Okay, let's get started. Welcome everyone to today's CNCF webinar, Vanilla Stack as a, as a platform for a truly vendor agnostic open source ecosystem. I'm Jerry Fallon and I'll be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenter today, Karsten Shemeshki, CEO at Cloudical. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of the Code of Conduct. Please be respectful of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io slash webinars. And with that, I'll hand it over to our presenter for today's webinar. Thanks. Um, um, sorry, sorry, uh, Gary, it was my fault here. Um, a little bit confused with the slides and with the screen controls, uh, but I hope it works now. Um, good morning, uh, 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 good evening, uh, wherever you are and welcome um, to this presentation. Um, I want to give you some insights into um, vanilla stack, what it is all about, and basically um, I want to do that from a, not obviously not a sales perspective, but more from a community perspective. Initially, I'm going to give you a little insight into what vanilla stack is actually all about. Then I'm going to showcase you uh, some aspects of vanilla stack, specifically um, the installer, because we feel like that is very important. And then I'm going to touch on uh, why it is important from our perspective to the community why we uh, and where we position that for the community and how we are going to um, um, proceed with that. Um, as Gary already mentioned, uh, uh, note down all of your questions. We will answer them later on and in the end. Um, so from my perspective, let's get started. Um, first of all, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what is currently going on outside our uh, uh, daily environment, outside our uh, uh, world in that regard, and so to say, um, where we are basically confronted with a lot of requirements uh, from our stakeholders when we are talking about and thinking about um, um, IT, um, greater flexibility in infrastructure, faster deployments, um, faster reactions, better scalability, 24-7 availability, automation, governance, and so on and so forth. You know all of that, and you know the, uh, the caveat dot, all of that is expected at lower costs, obviously, and why shouldn't it be uh, different in that regard? So um, what we need to, to talk about and what we need to focus about uh, ultimately is uh, how to uh, proceed from there and how to um, handle that. And that is basically uh, part of the, the situation and part of the positioning of vanilla stack where we uh, basically uh, I started when we talked about Vanilla Stack because um, pretty much all of the customers, our company and our organization and pretty much everywhere, um, uh, they are basically saying, okay, let's do cloud. Um, and we totally uh, accept that because um, it is uh, obviously um, uh, the thing of the future and the thing for the future. Um, nonetheless, um, cloud is not per se the answer. There are different flavors to that. And let me touch on them very shortly. I don't want to bore you, uh, but again, I feel like that is pretty important there. Um, so cloud is most often perceived as something where you do some lift and shifting, where you basically set up some infrastructures uh, and deploy things. Problem with is if you do that, well, let me put it that way, you won't uh, be able to gather all of the advantages of a cloud environment you might save some money or might actually not, uh, basically depending on your workload and basically depending on what you are doing. Um, so quite often, uh, the next logical step beyond lift and shift to most and if not all of the companies we are talking to is basically heading over to containers. Um, so when we talk about containers, they are perceived as basically a solution to all problems, but are they actually solving all of the problems? Let me put it that way. Um, with containers, uh, you would basically be able to, uh, uh, to to virtualize to some extent your workloads. It's a way 
uh, 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 less uh, uh, invasive kind of virtualization than a traditional virtualization. It's more lightweight. Um, but that, again, brings new challenges because uh, on the same infrastructure where you would have been able to run, say, dozens of uh, uh, um, virtual machines in the past, you would now be able to run hundreds of containers. But those containers need to be orchestrated. And that imposes real challenge in that kind of remove to the cloud uh, approach because those containers um, need to be orchestrated by a container orchestrator. Um, we uh, just uh, ran over those, uh, and we just um, um, finished those uh, container wars. Kubernetes was the winner, and Kubernetes is basically the container orchestrator. Now, it's an open source project. You know about that. It provides us with the opportunity to have some self-healing services, to have automatic load management. It's implemented with security by design. It's 100% open source, and there is a huge and ever-growing community behind it. That is awesome. That is actually so awesome that according to a study of 451 research group just conducted some weeks ago, 76% of all enterprises plan to move uh, towards Kubernetes over the next three years. Problem is Kubernetes alone is then again not the final answers because to that open source ecosystem based on Kubernetes, there are again a lot of challenges imposed um, because um, basically we are confronted with an environment where proprietary solutions are pushed with huge sums with a huge amount of money because that is the market of the future um, and even if you don't want to hand over or hand over your luck or your future towards proprietary solutions which is uh, uh, highly welcome um, you would be confronted with a lot of integrational efforts for your open source project. Um, it is very, very important to keep in mind that Kubernetes alone is not a solution to your answers. It's just a building block. It's a very fundamental building block, um, but it is just a building block. So you have to integrate a lot of things onto your Kubernetes clusters, say storage, operational tools, and so on and so forth. And then you would just have your start and would not even be done. Um, then there is one thing which troubles me personally a lot, and that is um, the vendor log that is even imposed on top of open source solutions. So if you look on to some of the products provided uh, 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 by the biggest open source uh, uh, vendors in the market, uh, I don't want to say the names of those red and green companies, they impose a vendor log on you as well because you just can run their Kubernetes solutions on top of their Linuxes, uh, coupled with their storage solution. That is the classical definition of a vendor lock. Um, the next challenge is um, that vanilla projects are often understood um, by stakeholders as not ready for prime time. Um, and then ecosystem, what ecosystem? So uh, with uh, um, open source projects uh, in the market competing with proprietary and vendor lock solutions, you have a problem in regards to an ecosystem because there is no such thing as a real and true ecosystem. It's just single products that are basically waiting for you to be integrated. Um, so a lot of work for you, a lot of efforts for you, uh, requiring a, a lot of knowledge and ultimately um, um, making it quite expensive um, to head over to those open source ecosystems. That is basically the situation uh, that we find ourselves in today. And that is why something as vanilla stack is now there. Um, again, I don't uh, uh, want you to, to touch the commercial aspects here. So I'm just giving you a short overview of vanilla stack. Vanilla stack is an open source enterprise cloud stack. Um, we basically try to combine both things. We understand Kubernetes as our operating system. This is very important to keep in mind. Remember the vendor lock? We try to solve that by basically not caring about which Linux you are running your vanilla stack upon. Um, vanilla stack is vanilla Kubernetes. We don't touch it, we just roll it out. Vanilla stack is vanilla Cloud Foundry. We don't touch it, we just roll it out in an opinionated way. Vanilla stack is Vanilla OpenStack, we don't touch it, we just roll it out in an opinionated way. Vanilla Stack is Rook, 
vanilla roux. We don't touch it. We just roll it out in an opinionated way. And we understand ourselves as an organization that is able uh, uh, to, to make that available as a community project. And that project is a truly open source project because what we roll out with vanilla stick, and I'm going to showcase you the vanilla installer uh, in a few seconds. What we roll out there is 100% open source projects. And it's not those vendor locked or vendor locking projects you might be seeing from other platforms. It is the vanilla edition of the project. So of the projects. So that is actually where the name came from. We did not want to alter Kubernetes. We do not want to alter OpenStack. We do not want to alter anything there. We just take it, we integrate it, and we roll it out in a way that you would be able to run, for example, your OpenStack on top of Kubernetes within an hour. Um, basically, obviously, depending on uh, um, the strength of your ecosystem and of your infrastructure, but that is basically um, what we promise you. Um, Vanilla Stack is made by the community for the community. So we um, position that uh, um, as something that supports the community. I'm going to touch on that in a few seconds as well. Um, and we don't impose any vendor lock. Um, Vanilla Stack, uh, which is currently available in its very first iteration, um, will have in its final iteration, uh, basically, um, or will present you with an ecosystem that is giving you um, the whole complete picture. So it is a complete open source stack, period. What you roll out with Vanilla Stack, with the installer and with the store is open source. We will later on have commercial products in there as well, but um, we will always focus on the open source uh, uh, versions of the products. We will always make them available. And if there is then later on some commercial offerings on top of that, well, we need to refine the project anyhow. So it is based on uh, Kubernetes. We uh, support Docker and Creo, uh, Istio, uh, Rook and Ceph for your storage purposes. Um, we have an integration with Netta Trident currently running in beta, which will be available in the next edition. Velero for your backup. I don't want to touch all uh, the projects here. Pretty importantly, uh, OpenStack as infrastructure as a services layer um, with the next iteration. Uh, uh, being available in one month from now. We will also have uh, uh, support for KubeWord in there. It is based on Ansible and Terraform. Um, we provide you already uh, in the current version with Cloud Foundry. In the next editions, we will also have support for GitLab and Jenkins. We uh, always ship it with Haber um, for your uh, operational approaches. Prometheus, Kafana, the F-Stack, Jaeger will be there and are actually there. Um, security is uh, done uh, by uh, the likes of Keycloak, Flaco, AquaClear, and then Vanilla Installer and Vanilla App Store. Um, I'm going again to touch them in a few seconds. They are also part of the stack and they are also open source. So that is basically um, um, the complete stack and it's not done there um, because from our perspective, that is just the beginning. First of all, let me uh, uh, touch again on the promises that the community and open source version already gives. Um, components are rolled out automatically. Um, the initial installation is done via vanilla installer and you bring in additional functionality via the so-called vanilla store. Um, and we promise you um, again in the open source version and let me, be, let me be very clear on that. The community edition does not differ in any kind from the commercial edition there um, out, of, out of the box integration and out of the box operability. So whenever you roll out something with vanilla stack, you can rest assured it just works. And it is again, not any kind of vendor locked product. It is not, uh, I don't know, the Kubernetes running uh, with Microsoft AKS or uh, the Amazon version. It is the Kubernetes we roll out. Um, but we want to go a little bit further than that. We do not just want to provide you with a platform. We want to set up and start something like an ecosystem in the end. And we mean it in that way, it should be an open source ecosystem. So the ecosystem and the platform are open by design and mindset. We support vanilla projects. We won't provide any kind of vendor lock. It can be expanded with a huge amount of open source and commercial com components. And again, we understand it as an ecosystem. So what we will provide you and what we will provide uh, the community with is a complete trustworthy environment uh, with 100% open source components, um, which is 100% supported by 
us and obviously by the community and which is open sourced on its own. You might ask where vanilla stack is able to run. Well, let me be very clear on that. It runs everywhere. It runs on everything, uh, starting from bare metal environments via VMs, uh, uh, public private clouds up to the hyperscalers. It runs everywhere. And now I'm going to showcase you uh, uh, how simple it is to set up something with vanilla stack installer. Um, for the purposes of um, basically um, this webinar, uh, given that we don't have the time to actually roll out something, um, I'm going to do that in a dry run, uh, but rest assured, it runs the same way uh, um, in a, a, a real uh, environment and a real ecosystem. So now um, my uh, uh, virtual machine should be visible. Um, I should have changed uh, the screen sharing accordingly. Let me recheck that again. Yet, yes, it should be. So here you see basically um, the starting screen of Vanilla Stack. Vanilla Stack installer is just a Docker image. It's available today. Um, there's also an ISO image available. So there's ideally no need for you to install anything on your local machine, perhaps besides a Docker image or uh, mounting the ISO image to your uh, uh, virtual machine uh, software and then basically start it up. Um, we currently, uh, uh, that, that uh, thing I'm going to showcase you now is uh, still based on a preview version. Uh, this evening, um, it will be changed to be um, the version um, 29.09. Uh, um, and um, the first uh, uh, selection you have to do and the first choice you have to make is basically, do you want to have an HA installation or not? Just make your choice there. If it is an HA installation, we will set up three uh, master nodes. If it is uh, um, a non-HA installation, we will just set up one master node. And then you basically define your initial workloads. Keep in mind, you can always change that later on. You can always add things later on. We start always with Rook as, um, 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 as your uh, storage uh, solution. Currently, you cannot uh, 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 deselect Rook, um, that is by intent, um, because we want um, um, your Kubernetes installation always to be in a production grade state. Cloudical, my company, is amongst the biggest Rook, uh, Rook contributors uh, on this planet, so we love that project, we, we understand it, and we are able to roll it out. Um, Additionally, you can uh, decide whether to install OpenStack here, uh, as well as whether to install Cloud Foundry, if you like. Um, and you can then basically select the amount of master nodes you want to have uh, vanilla stack be rolled out with. This can then again later on be expanded. Um, the minimum amount of worker nodes uh, uh, is three. You can basically go up, up to like 90, 95 um, if you liked it, but um, I would not recommend that. So we keep it uh, for the purpose of this uh, uh, demonstration pretty short and just with three worker nodes. Um, and now is the only moment where you would need to touch a terminal during the installation because um, the installer creates um, an SSH key. It uses a private key and asks you to deploy the public key uh, onto your worker and master nodes. So once you did that and how it is done is uh, described within the installer as well, you just uh, um, accept uh, or you just uh, uh, say that you did that, press next and then um, you can basically go and define your master and your worker nodes. Um, again, I'm just doing a presentation. So basically I can use any kind of random IP address I want to use because in this presentation, nothing is going to uh, be rolled out. Uh, uh, so I just add some IP addresses. Um, I do the same for my workers. Um, I today did that already like five times on a real environment with real IP addresses and I can show you it works the same. Um, once you defined uh, uh, um, your uh, master and worker nodes, um, you can basically define and uh, uh, basically uh, yeah, make your selection uh, which workload will be available on which uh, um, uh, uh, worker node. Um, if you have more than three workers, it makes obviously sense to basically say, okay, on which worker would I want to have uh, my Rook deployed because you might have fast uh, uh, SSDs there. Um, here in this case, you basically say, okay, I assign Rook, OpenStack, and Cloud Foundry, whatever you want to roll out 
to all of the nodes. Now, the next step is basically uh, um, already a step that is working with your infrastructure because now you need to do a node check. Um, so this node check is basically connecting to your nodes. It is basically um, checking um, and whether you have enough RAM a minimum of two gigabytes should be there. Um, whether you have enough uh, CPUs, we would recommend a minimum of two vCPUs. Um, and whether you have enough uh, storage or disk space, like uh, 20 gigabytes should do perfectly fine. And for the Rook nodes, whether you already have um, a raw device uh, provisioned. If not, um, you find uh, the appropriate information here so you can then provision your raw devices for Rook. Once you successfully validated your nodes, you can press the next button. And now um, we actually are approaching the cluster settings. So you can basically um, either use an external load balancer or a cluster IP or uh, perhaps even the IP address of your first uh, or perhaps only uh, master as you like. And then you would basically um, give um, um, your cluster a domain name. Um, so we might call it here demo.vanillastack.org. Um, and this domain name is the later on used uh, um, for basically all the components being exposed to the outside world automatically. So you just have to do um, um, the prefixing thing um, and we pre-populate that um, with useful values. Vanilla stack then again is always uh, is already coming integrated with Let's Encrypt. You can basically choose whether you want to have Let's Encrypt in staging or non-production production mode or in production mode. We would always recommend for any kind of test clusters your staging uh, uh, mode, although it might uh, lead to SSS certificate issues. You need to uh, give a, a proper uh, email address for Let's Encrypt to be able to communicate to you. Um, and then you would go and do um, your basic settings for your workloads you want to roll out. So for Rook, for example, if you want to have the Rook dashboard being exposed, well, just press uh, that option and enable that option. The same is true for monitoring. You can basically find how many replica levels would be there uh, for Rook. Basically, how often is the data replicated on Ceph? Three times is the default. You can go down to two and you can go up to five. Um, according to your needs and according um, to the power of your infrastructure. The higher the number, the slower it gets. Then um, you have to uh, basically do your OpenStack settings. We support three OpenStack releases. Again, the open source releases there, not any kind of vendor locked ones. Um, and then you would basically be able to do some, some basic settings um, for your OpenStack components. Um, so we pre-populated then uh, those settings again. Um, you could just leave them or you could basically adjust them to your, name, to your needs. The same is true for Cloud Foundry. We always ship it with the Stratos dashboard. So you always would have some sort of nice little uh, web front end. And then basically comes the additional tool selection to be rolled out initially. Harbor is pretty important to us because we feel like it makes a lot of sense to have your own Docker registry available. So Harbor is already pre-selected. The same is true for Prometheus and Kafana. Um, you can basically pretty easily select the whole Elastic stack. You can install Jaeger tracing. Uh, we always rely on Nginx Ingress. We always install with uh, Kubernetes Cert Manager and we give you the option to install Kubernetes dashboard as well. Once you did your selection here, You'll be, you are presented with a summary. You can always jump back to the different sections here by pressing the edit link. But once you're satisfied, just press the install button and then the installation might start. That is just, again, uh, uh, not a real installation. Now going on here, it's just um, a dry run. Um, so we can wait for a very short time. Um, in, in, again, in, in reality, it takes like an hour depending on your workloads you roll out and depending on your network connection um, before uh, your installation is done. Here it is uh, done in a few seconds. Um, and you would then basically see uh, the final screen um, with your OpenStack uh, basic password, with your Cloud Foundry password. You can download your uh, kubectl config. Um, you can show your logs. You can download your logs and then you are gone. Uh, done. That is basically um, the uh, um, 
the uh, um, pretty uh, 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 rough view on the installer. Um, again, that installer is available today um, with everything we do internally as open source. So you can basically use your vanilla stack um, for several use cases right away. Um, for infrastructure as a services with OpenStack Helm, with Rook, um, we, you can later on install it via the App Store once that one is available and we checked it. It's able to run, uh, to be rolled out and uh, operational within 40 minutes um, at best. Uh, although uh, my colleague uh, uh, basically claimed he can do that in less than 30 minutes with Vanilla Stack. Um, and another or a different use case would be platform as a services uh, uh, on Vanilla Stack, where you would basically roll out Kubernetes, Harbor, Rook, um, GitLab, uh, Jenkins, Cloud Foundry, currently just Cloud Foundry um, on the environment. Um, Istio and GitLab and Jenkins will be there with um, the uh, store again in like two to four weeks. It will be there. Um, we recommend uh, to have a, a decent setup there. The same is true for ops. You can basically roll out Prometheus, Grafana, F or X stacks, um, Rook and Ceph or storage, um, and everything will be rolled out and directly usable. The most important aspect in that, and we are in a CNCF uh, webinar, is the community. And that is very, very important to us. Um, we don't want to just have a cloudical based product. So we understand Vanilla Stack as a community project. First of all, it is open source. Head over to Vanilla Stack IO or head over to Vanilla Stack.org um, and you would be able to uh, basically uh, use Vanilla Stack now, download it now. Um, you can see the sources, they are available now, uh, but we want to go a little step further. First of all, again, the open source uh, or the sources are available now. Um, it is uh, available under Apache 2.0 license. Um, so you can basically use it uh, uh, and work with it as you like. Um, it is open uh, to community contributors now. Um, and we are actually and currently uh, reaching out to many uh, Linux Foundation and Cloud Native Foundation projects um, already have some uh, interesting conversations there because we invite all of you uh, um, to um, uh, participate in that. Um, it is a completely open system and we want to make it even more open. That's why we want to hand it over to a newly formed foundation in Q1 next year. It's basically depending on some uh, uh, formal stuff and on some um, 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 uh, uh, legal uh, uh, stuff there, but we don't want this thing, we don't want Vanilla Stack to be just something for Claudical for my company um, and to be just the next vendor locked kind of thing we want it to be open, we will donate it to the community and pretty importantly to us, um, it is available now um, and it is available today uh, in two versions, the community version and the commercial version. And you might ask where the difference between both of those versions is, there is actually just one singular difference. The community, the community version is a rolling release, pretty much similar to Fedora, for example, or to OpenSUSE. Um, uh, tumbleweed, um, whereas the commercial version is a uh, more stable version in regards to that we basically um, have um, a little, uh, uh, that we are a little bit slower in uh, publishing things there. Um, other than that, you can do whatever you want to do with the community version. It is again open source, the same is true for the, for the commercial version. It just uses a different repository. Um, and um, ultimately, you can uh, uh, basically use the community version for any kind of production grade workloads. Um, we give you, a, there, there's, there's, a, there's a support option there called export call. Um, you will find more information on that from tomorrow on our homepage um, that basically gives you support for vanilla stack as well as every workload you run on top of a community version as well as your Linux installation. Um, that is done on a per incident basis, but you can basically have that kind of support even for the community versions. There are other uh, support versions for the commercial or support options for the commercial versions available, um, but 
basically um, just take the community version, work with that, be happy and uh, um, just use it. Um, use it to build up your own ecosystem. Um, we are highly, highly into that. Um, Vanilla Installer is available today. The same is true for the forums. The same is true for the beginning of the documentation, always the Achilles heel of open source projects. We know that we are no better than other projects in that regard. And again, commercial support is available from today as well. Um, the roadmap, uh, which might be of interest to you as well. Um, Manila Stack roadmap, um, we today, and I speak of today, support Fedora and Ubuntu. So you can basically roll it out on those platforms. If you would mind wait just two more days, you would be able to roll it out on Debian CentOS or OpenSUSE as well. Um, so what we basically want to achieve and what is very important to us in that regard is that vanilla stack is not limiting you in, every, in anything. We basically run on any modern Linux distribution um, on pretty much any uh, uh, um, environment. Um, with commercial Linuxes, uh, we will support uh, RHEL and uh, SLES in October this year. There will be a separate announcement and uh, we will provide another tool to the community uh, in November, that is the so-called remote installer, which prevents you from even having to download an ISO image or a Docker image because it's basically completely web-based. Um, and there will be a so-called cloud installer, which basically provisions your um, Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud environments for you and rolls it out there, available from December as well. So um, I know that was quite a run. Uh, if you want to learn more, want to understand more, head over to vanillastack.io. That is basically the homepage uh, to the commercial edition. The community is, uh, or the links to the community uh, staff are available from vanillastack.org. Um, and we would happily share and spread the word if you, uh, and we would basically uh, 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 want to do that using the hashtag vanillastack. And um, I'm now stopping my presentation because I need to take a short, break. I just need to <sighs> breathe um, and just wanted to give you that insight into Vanilla Stack. Well, thank you very much, Karsten, for a wonderful presentation. Um, thank you. We have plenty of time for questions at all. So if anybody has any questions they'd like to ask, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A box and we'll get to as many as we can. Anyone at all? Could you elaborate a bit on OpenStack? I can do that. Um, perhaps you want to understand a little bit more. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm not sure uh, into which direction your question uh, uh, is heading, but. Um, let me, uh, first of all, uh, give you uh, uh, perhaps an understanding um, um, of uh, which OpenStack version we support. We basically support OpenStack Helm. So we use the uh, Helm version of OpenStack, roll it out on top of Vanilla Stack, on top of Kubernetes, um, and uh, ultimately uh, give you with um, Vanilla Stack uh, then the option um, to um, um, finally um, just have your infrastructure as a services environment there. Again, it's a community open stack. Um, so it's with Neutron, it's with uh, uh, Mistral, it's with all the great open stack projects. Although, um, and that is a small caveat at this moment, since open stack provides you with like three quadrillion uh, 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 different uh, uh, opportunities and setups, we are opinionated in that way. So the OpenStack installation um, is basically OpenStack Helm. Again, three different uh, um, editions are currently available, um, uh, starting with, uh, uh, 
now I need to look it up for myself. Thank you for that. Um, starting with, um, give me a second, uh, Train, Stein, and Usui, um, exactly. Um, we would recommend setting it up uh, uh, on uh, the Stein release because that's the currently most stable version. But again, um, also the more modern versions are available there. Uh, in regards to OpenStack and in regards to the other projects, one pretty important aspect is we cannot go uh, uh, and provide you with always the newest version when they come out. Um, obviously, we need to uh, basically um, uh, adjust our installation uh, 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 scripts. Uh, we need to install uh, perhaps uh, the installer on its own. So it, we basically plan to be um, with Kubernetes a maximum of half a year behind the major. Uh, we usually tend to do that in one or two months, but basically maximum a, a half a year uh, later. And with OpenStack, it could be up to a year, depending on the compatibility, depending on the underlying uh, um, um, prerequisites. Um, that is part of the truth there as well. Um, if you have more questions on OpenStack, let me put it that way. Um, we could provide you with those uh, if you would read uh, with, with, with detailed, really detailed answers to that. If you would reach out, uh, I don't want to, to uh, uh, I don't know, um, how is it called, uh, uh, grab your email addresses or whatever. It's not about that, but we have the experts there. Um, so um, we can uh, give you any answer you like. Um, again, it's OpenStack Helm. It's the open source version. Um, it, it requires a minimum of three worker nodes. Uh, um, you should have plenty of RAM. You should plenty. Of, you should have plenty of storage. You should have plenty of CPUs. But yeah, that's true for every kind of OpenStack environment. It runs perfectly on top of Kubernetes. That is what I can say um, in regards to OpenStack. Does it answer your question or do you want to know a little bit more or want to want me to, to elaborate into a different direction? Please ask that in, in, in the Q&A as well. Does anyone have anything further they would like to ask? We have plenty of time, folks. There is, a, oh, pardon me, uh, uh, Gary, you need to, to uh, accept that question. Pardon me on that. I just wanted to answer it or early right away. Will you support offsite installations? Yeah, that is a good question. Um, um, well, um, Yes, um, um, over time, um, um, we are actually working on that at the moment. Offset installation basically uh, have the, uh, uh, give you the, the, the challenge of um, not being able to download um, stuff uh, um, from uh, the official repositories anywhere because you don't have any kind of internet connection. Um, we are working on that and we will provide you with support on that. Um, but I cannot give you an exact time frame on that because um, there's a lot of challenge uh, uh, with that. But let me put it that way. Um, we are actively working on that. We, and we expect to have a solution there um, until the end of this year. Um, there's a lot of challenge with that, uh, frankly, because you have to have all the images downloaded onto some sort of a local medium. Um, that is basically uh, to be done. Other than that, um, we are able to uh, then support it. So we are working on that. The team, the awesome team is working on it. Frankly, let me be very clear on that. Vanilla Stack is on our end a community project as well. So on our team, um, they are all working in their spare time on Vanilla Stack. Um, we have some full-time employees working on it, but the other part of the team and the, the more enthusiastic part of the team is actually working uh, in its uh, spare time on it. So kudos to the team because uh, that project would not have been possible um, without their support. I just want to mention it there. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I was too fast.
Okay. Um, Gary, um, um, what do you think? Shall we wrap up? Yeah, no one has any more questions here at all. We'll, um, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Um, we'd like to thank everybody for attending today. And thanks to Carson for our wonderful presentation. Um, as I said before, today's presentation will be on the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io slash webinars. Thank you all again for attending. Stay safe, take care, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.